Welcome to BAC World of Welding. Today we're going to talk about the EWM 230 ACDC TIG. This machine's 230 amps at 35% duty cycle. Before we set up our process, we have a look at what we've got to select from. We've got stick or TIG. In the stick process, we will put on our stick leads and we'll run the electrodes, whether they're cellulose, iron powder, GP, or low hydrogen. But today we're going to set it up for TIG. So we press this button here, so now the machine knows it's going to perform the TIG process. Over here we've got a selection switch for our, our torch trigger, which we will four step or two step. Two step as mentioned in previous videos, hold your trigger down all the time, let it go, then the arc would stop. Four step, trigger on, let it go, continue welding, press the trigger and get a down slope or finish the arc immediately. There's also a, a spot timer involved at the top if you wish to do any measured time for spot timing. On this side, we can have a pulse on or pulse off. No light showing, there's no pulse happening at the moment. But we're going to do some pulsing, so I want to select seconds. So once I've selected seconds, I can dial in my measured amount of peak and background current. Over here we've got a polarity switch. So now we can talk about running AC in three modes. There's AC sine wave, there's AC square wave and trapezoid. There's three waves you can, can deliver your AC waveform. If you're in DC, you've got DC negative on TIG as we know that DC will run on negative, but you can do the positive on your stick electrode welding as well. So we're gonna go down to square wave. We've got a little, a little bit more um, uh, versatility in the square wave to adjust our, our peak and background currents once we've set that. And down here we also have a row of three buttons. This one here, you dial in your tungsten diameter, which is 2.4. We've got a 2.4 tungsten, and it's a, a zirconated tungsten because we're going to do in aluminium. Then we put in our, our negative and positive, positive balance in the AC wave cycle. We go to the left, we're going to get more cleaning. We go to the right. On, on the negative side, we're going to get more penetration. Then we have a frequency button. Our standard frequency is 50 hertz but we get up to 200 hertz there in frequencies. So we can adjust that as well. This is your main control knob for adjusting your amperage. The amperage will give you overall heat input. That one there. So then we've got this button with all the arrows on it. They will scroll through here. When we scroll through with this button, red means amperage and green is seconds. So you can put a amount of time on, a certain amount of amperage. So if we start from over here, we also have an arc active. An arc active is a component that BOC is, uh, has put in along with EWM to allow inconsistency in stick out, arc lengths. So when people bury their tungsten in towards their, the well pool or lengthen it, the arc active controls that so you have a more moderate heat input so it's not fluctuating. The arc energies are gonna remain the same. At the start, we've got some free gas. Then we've got some amperage, starting amps. We're gonna ramp up time, how long you want it to go from your start current. So when you press the button and hold it down, you're gonna get your measured amount of amperage. You let it go, it'll ramp up. And that time there, you can dial in what you want. One second, and then it'll go to your main amps, whatever you've dialed in for main, it might be 100 amps. Let's go around figures, 100 amps. We want it on for how many seconds? Let's say 0.2 of a second. So it's going to be 0.2 of a second on 100 amps. We're pulsing. And down here, it's going to go 100 amps down 70% of 100 amps, which will be 70 amps. Then you're going to put a time on how you want it for 70 amps. There's your 70%. And we want to have it for, say, 0.2. Let's keep it all the same. So what's going to happen there? You're going to have 100 amps for 0.2 of a second, 70 amps for 0.2 of a second. And that's going to fluctuate depending on your frequency. The pulse is good to put a peak current in to keep the overall heat in the job, then take the heat out, the less distortion in the plates. Then we can come to a downslope, and then when you've got your current running here, you've got a downslope that can run down and finish off at a certain current. So we're gonna put in there, say, half a second, and it's gonna work, it's, I've got in 50%, so the overall heat that's here, it'll finish off at 50%, and they commonly call that a crater fill. So that cools the paddle down as you're finishing off, so you're not leaving a divot 
which can give you crater cracking. So that's what a crater fill will be. So 50% it's gonna end up at, and then you've got some post gas flow. The post gas flow is very important to cool your tungsten down. If you took the gas away from your tungsten immediately, you, you're gonna get contamination in your tungsten and you're forever cleaning it. And we all know what the shielding gas does. We're gonna have straight argon. There are other blends of gases we have. What that does is shield the weld area from any outside contaminations. There's a lovely gas we have on the market now for DC stainless welding. It's Argo Plus 5. It has 5% hydrogen in it. It's un unbelievable in, in, in speed and appearance over straight argon. So once we've done that, we've set a procedure, we're ready to go. But once you've got a, a procedure you quite like, there's another program in here, jobs. You've got seven vacant jobs available to lock in that procedure that has been successful the last time you welded. Job three might be on three millimetre aluminium. Job five might be on six millimetre. So these, uh, these machines can store those jobs and you can recall them up and put it, put it back in the, in the process to uh, replicate the last job you did. The torch itself, once I said, you can, well, there are two, two types available. This one's an up-down torch. We do have a, a torch where you can uh, change your amperage on the fly uh, as you're welding. But it's a very basic setup. You've got a high frequency button on the back which you can turn your high frequency on and off. Um, but we do get some nice results even on fusion welding. We have uh, just doing corner to corner type welding without any filler wire. You can dial in your, your time on and time off when it comes to high, peak and background current and get that nice scalloped effect. People like an appearance with TIG welding. And TIG welding is one of the cleanest welding processes we have. So once you've got all that set, you've got the right tungsten. Don't forget when you're doing uh, aluminium welding, you've got a zirconated tungsten, uh, stainless steel, the old thoriated, but now we have a rare earth tungsten, uh, less carcinogenic fibres once you're grind, when you're grinding them. Um, there are a range of tungsten that are dedicated to aluminium or stainless steel. The aluminium generally would ball up the al and in the stainless one you would have grind it to a pencil point uh, for more directed current down in the root gap. Gary's going to weld a piece of aluminium together but make sure you have the aluminium clean and also before you start welding make sure you wear the correct PPE. As you can see, a nice clean and uniform profile weld. Working with gas is as easy as BOC. Come and see us in store, check us out online.